Okay. We might as well start with the present. Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to say on this Sabbath, all praises be to Ahaya Bahashim Yeshaya Wabarwak, the Most High, in the name of Christ. Okay. Hope you all are doing well this Sabbath. Uh, we might as well start with the present. All right. When I say the present, what's going on in the earth today? Now, I might as well start with what, what, what's actually going on while the world have been uh, what you would call uh, uh, moved in the wrong direction with the diversion called the Boston Marathon. So while the whole world was getting diverted with the Boston Marathon, which we can touch on in a moment, something of great significance, of biblical proportion, have happened, happened last week under everyone's nose. Uh, if you notice, I know you all see this, how they're using what they call false flag attacks or events. They usually call them events that they use uh, in an effort to engage population into the next agenda. It's event after event. All these things are pre-planned, what legislation they'll bring forth, and how much more military will be uh, in your presence engaging you based on these pretexts, these pretexts or plans through government. You know, it's the same thing over and over again. Something happens. A drill is going on while it's happening. Then the governor comes out. Then the police commissioner comes out at a press conference. The next day, there's a manhunt. Then the day after that, they find the guy, quote unquote, usually it's a patsy, somebody that was on drugs or under some program under government or was under government surveillance being utilized. And then they put it on the patsy and then you think the story go away, but it doesn't go away because whatever legislation that was passed to engage or to get in your space or take away rights have now been in place and they will never get revoked again. Which means what's ever implemented, that's what's implemented. That's what you can look forward to uh, in, uh, for the foreseeable future. Now, of course, some people was alarmed and I wasn't even going to touch on it today, but I thought I would talk about it just a little bit. Uh, some brothers and sisters were alarmed with what happened in Massachusetts. We got brothers and sisters in Massachusetts. Uh, the fact that there was a lockdown uh, where no one could leave their houses for an extended period of time until these so-called uh, suspects was apprehended. And they said, don't open the door, don't go anywhere unless, you know, don't open the door unless authority asks you to open the door. Really what that is outright, all over Massachusetts, that was uh, a beta test of what you would call a drill for martial law. They get people acclimated into listening to government, staying in your house, martial law, militaries on the street, and that's what they're acclimating the society with. So this don't have anything to do with that Boston thing. You understand? I mean, that whole thing, you all know what that is. We don't have to go into it. A matter of fact, just assume and know that it None of that even happened. If you believe any of those stories, you believe, if you believe any part of those stories, you believe the story. That's the whole point. Why they, why you sitting here picking apart some diversion they've created, something else is happening of higher biblical proportion of, uh, that, that, that means more than what you're actually seeing. It's a switch and bait. You understand? They want everyone to look at Boston Marathon. They want everyone to look at what's blown up, who's the guy, and they'll be talking on the news, who's this guy, who's his parents, where did he go to school. All these things will be going on for the next uh, two, three weeks. It went from Dorner to this guy. First it was Dorner, which was preparing people to be engaged by government coming into your space. But who knows who Dorner is? He just came out of nowhere. As far as we all know, this guy, open the door to get down. 
This guy it, it could be a figment of someone's imagination. Who knows that that even happened? But they're moving population from one point to the next. First Dorner, now these guys. All right? Wait, put that down. Yeah. First Dorner, now these guys. All right? Now, so what was going on? What is going on while everyone is think, looking, looking at the Boston Marathon? I want you to check this out and tell me if this is more important than what they're showing you. I have an article here. Okay? Can you, and th listen, this is mainstream news. Here's an article. And it's from the Horitz. H-A-A-R-E-T-Z. Okay? It's a mainstream Jewish newspaper. Mainstream. So while the switch and bait is going on, I like to look at what they're talking about. What does this say in, in the Haaretz? Uh, this is from uh, Aretz, uh Israel News. It says, U.S. Senate Committee passes resolution back to back Israel in conflict with Iran. Read that title again. U.S. Senate Committee passes resolution to back Israel in conflict with Iran. U.S. Senate Committee passes resolution to back Israel in conflict with Iran. So what are they really preparing the world for? Okay. What are they really getting in place with all these false flags? What they're getting in place? Military intervention for when there's World War III. They're putting the infrastructure in place. That's what's going on. It have nothing to do with the Boston Marathon. It have nothing to do with Dorner. It have nothing to do with anything they tell you. They're actually putting their military grid in place for war. What war? The greatest and most damning war that have ever hit this planet, according to the Bible. See, that's what's really going on. I'm above even searching these false flag things anymore from Sandy Hook on and on and on. Because what they're doing is they're moving from place to place, implementing military intervention and getting, getting the grid in place for war that actually leads to the fall of Babylon altogether. Look what happened in Texas. Oh, some fertilizer plant or something just blows up from nowhere. Oh, you thought it was just coincidence right after the Boston Marathon. Oh, in Texas, something blows up. Well, come to find out all these governors that, that have these false flags under them are one of the ten governors that will be under the executive order when there's martial law implemented. And believe it or not, it's already been implemented. They're just using these slow, gradual scenarios to get you acclimated to what law enforcement is already dealing with. That's why law enforcement are, 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 are operating the way they're operating right now. That's why it seems like they're on edge and things, you, you understand, like they've been prepped to go against population. Can you somebody get that? One moment. Let's just get rid of it. One moment. Okay. One moment here. One moment. So they're trying to get everyone acclimated. Okay? That's what's really going on. Acclimated into what? The, pre the preparation for World War Three. I need you to read that again, that article there. It says, uh, U.S. Senate, you can now scroll back up. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, U.S. Senate committee passes resolution to back Israel in conflict with Iran. Read it again. 
U.S. Senate Committee passes resolution to back Israel in conflict with Iran. U.S. Senate Committee passes resolution to back Israel in conflict with Iran. Now listen to what the resolution says. Go ahead. It says, Resolution 65 goes beyond affirming U.S. commitment to preventing a nuclear Iran to ensure it will authorize the use of military force, diplomatic, military, and economic support to Israel in its defense of its territory, people, and existence. Well, while Israel was marking 65 years of independence on Tuesday, the U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee voted to endorse Resolution 65, affirming that the U.S. will fully back Israel should it be drawn into conflict with Iran. The resolution introduced by Senate Robert Menendez, uh, Democrat, New Jersey, and Lindsey Graham, Republican, I'm assuming that's South Carolina. Yeah, Republican of South Carolina, to show you that it have nothing to do with Mm -hmm. Democrat or Republican. They, they, they're on the same team. They just caused this division within the, the process so that people can believe that there's one side fighting for people and there's another side fighting for the people when it's really divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. when, the, the, when, when, when the Democrats and Republicans are really on the same team and just appear to be uh, uh, dealing with divide when they before the public. You understand? But really, they're, they're working together. Democrats and Republicans alike have signed this bill. Go ahead. It says, uh, the resolution introduced by Senators Robert Menendez and Lindsey Graham, and which has 70, 79 co-sponsors, is expected to pass in the Senate. According to the text of the resolution on the U.S. Congress website, the goal of the resolution is that if the government of Israel is compelled to take military action and legitimate self-defense against Iran's nuclear weapons program. Now listen to how it's worded. In direct defense against Iran's nuclear weapons program. That means Iran didn't strike them. Iran didn't use any nuclear weapons against them. But they're making it seem as if they're using defense, like their offense is actually a defense. You see how backward speaking they are? If they feel they need to defend themselves against a possible nuclear weapon from Iran. So it's a preemptive strike, similar to what happened with uh, Iran, I mean Iraq, when they said there was no weapons of mass destruction. Listen to this clearly when they said that they was weapons of mass destruction. Listen. It says, if the government of Israel is compelled to take military action and legitimate self-defense against Iran's nuclear, nuclear weapons program, the United States government should stand with Israel and provide, in accordance with the United States law and the constitutional responsibility of Congress to authorize the use of military force. To, to use of what? Military force. So what is this saying? This is saying right here that U.S. troops will be in war against Iran. And who's going to use American troops? Israel. That's what this is saying. Now what does that mean? I'm going to show you in a moment. Pull that down there. Go ahead. So it says, in accordance with the United States law and the constitutional responsibility of Congress to authorize the use of military force, Go ahead. diplomatic, military, and economic support to the government of Israel in defense of its territory, people, and existence. Go ahead. The text of the resolution includes several cla clauses. Somebody got to get a ball on that thing. Go ahead. It says the text of the resolution includes several clauses relating to the U.S. government's position on Iran. The Department of State has designated the Islamic Republic of Iran as a state sponsor of terrorism since 1984. and has characterized the Islamic Republic of Iran as the most active state sponsor of terrorism in the world. I the heard that before. Go ahead. The government of the Islamic Republic of Iran has provided weapons, training, and funding to the regime of Bashar al-Assad, 